Hey, what's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another Let's Talk F1 2018. This one for the Williams FW41, the 2018 challenger for the Williams Martini racing team. And of course, straight away, you can tell it's a it's a Williams Martini car. Obviously, nothing has really changed too much with the livery, apart from a little bit of a different uh, way they've uh, presented the shark fin, I guess you could say, with the 18 of Stroll in the middle of the red on the shark fin. But uh, aesthetically, in terms of the livery, uh, unsurprisingly, really, for now what is a fifth year in a row fourth year in a row uh, they've not changed too much since 2014 in terms of the way the martini stripe goes down the car um, I don't know they could have tried something with a halo but no it, they've just decided to keep it white and I don't know in my opinion I, I you know looking back at the Haas from yesterday I actually like I prefer the way Haas did it than Williams because it just a bit, it's a bit more in your face with the, just the plain white halo but that's just my opinion I've seen some people on Twitter just now say they actually like the look of it in terms of it kind of just lost over their eyes because it was in white and kind of was in keeping with the rest of the car in white but um that's just my that's just my take on it and uh, some interesting little things on the side pod the way they've just like cut out some white paint I kind of likened it to when a girl does contouring on her cheeks they've almost kind of tried to hide the true shape of the side pod underneath there and kind of I don't know almost like they ran out of white paint but uh I don't know look kind of kind of nice in an aggressive sort of way I guess you could say but that's the that's the car aesthetically but of course here on Let's Talk F1 uh, you know, last two years, what we usually do is some more aerodynamic analysis. Obviously, it's not going to be super, super in-depth and technical like you might see tech analysts do on websites because, of course, that's their full-time job. This is not mine, but this is just a kind of a neat thing I like to do every single year because I'm an engineering graduate, so it really interests me. And uh, clearly, from yesterday's video, you guys found it very interesting. And definitely, the Williams car, actually, aside from the livery, it is an interesting car because they've changed it quite a lot. This is definitely a Paddy Lowe car. Now, Paddy Lowe obviously joined Williams uh, the previous year, but he didn't really get to influence that car because that car was already designed when he got there. So this is the first time where Paddy Lowe has really started to work his magic and have an influence on where they're going and the roadmap of the car's upgrades for the rest of the season. They clearly have taken a lot of inspiration from other teams. You'll see a lot of times there's copying from the likes of Ferrari and Mercedes and we'll point that or we'll, we'll point those out and get to that. But uh, definitely you can see, uh, you know, what a good signing that was for Williams, clearly, in terms of the development of the car. You know, last year their car pretty much hit a cliff in terms of where they were going and they pretty much just dropped off ever since Baku really. Whereas this year, I don't know, I would like to tentatively say they've got a good foundation to maybe go forward. We'll just have to see if they can actually do that because time and time again, Williams just haven't been able to do that. But uh, let's go through the car then and look at it. Unfortunately, there's only two photos really that are high res. Williams decided to launch their car in Shoreditch in London and project their car onto a wall, which meant all the journalists taking photos were, um, well, they're just not very good photos. It's 2018 for God's sake and they just don't have very good photos. So I'm working off two high res photos. One that Williams tweeted out and then one that F1 Racing Mag has as their front cover and I managed to kind of Photoshop it and kind of angle it in a way where I can get it across the entire video screen. But yeah, so you're going to have to uh, take my apologies for that. Only two high res photos at the moment but uh, for time's sake, we're going to have to work with it. And actually to be honest, it gets all the main big features. So let's get into it then. So let's start off with the first photo then from Twitter. We've blown it up and trying to uh, improve the exposure so we can actually see a little bit more of the detail. So we're going to start from the front of the car. Not going to mention the front wing. Um, kind of, we went through. If you want to kind of know a bit more about 2017 and 2018 aero of what all the teams are going to try and do for the front wings, you can go see the Hass video I uploaded yesterday, where I kind of showed off in illustrations of what they try to do with the vortex manipulation by pushing it to the side of the tire. But that's pretty much the case with every single team is trying to do that. So we're going to skip over that. That's not really anything of interest. The big interest for the front end is you've got this Mercedes snowplow rake, and very much you know Hass had a kind of glimpse of a copy of that but Williams have fully gone for a complete snowplow just like Mercedes had where it goes from essentially halfway down the nose all the way back pretty much to the suspension there and so that's probably one thing that maybe Paddy brought over you know he was probably there at Mercedes when they're maybe thinking up the idea at the end of 2016 you know going into 2017 then when he got nicked um I can't exactly remember when he got nicked over for Williams but that was probably maybe something that he maybe had a little bit of knowledge of but maybe they couldn't bring it onto the car or you know just a case of now finally now for the new car they thought right the philosophy is there to do it obviously you can't just pick and choose parts to put on the car it has to work with the entire philosophy of the car so that's why I'm saying now this is a padded low car and now uh, they've even said it in, pre in the press conference snippets now padded low saying they've got a good foundation a roadmap of where they're going to go with so the snow plow uh, from Mercedes from last year is in keeping with their new philosophy now for Williams and so they have it on the car and they can use it they've retained the S-Doc kind of usual stuff there that I don't, don't see any reason why 
why they get rid of the S-duct. If you don't know what the S-duct is, it's that little opening at the top just above the Lance Stroll number 18 there. And that is going to be the exit of an S-shaped duct that starts at the front of the car by the nose and by the pillars of the nose. And it's taking air from that bottom side by the nose cone up to the top of the chassis. That injection of air, the injecting of air basically encourages mixing of the air at the very top of that chassis. And the better mixing you have, the smoother the flow is. And even more so, really, actually, this year, that's going to be very, very important for the top of the chassis because you have that gopping thing of a halo right there. So getting the air treated how you want as it hits the halo and then treating the, the air with the halo itself is going to be very important because they have to try and avoid getting as much turbulent air into the engine bay, into the engine inlet, and trying to push it outward and just trying to push it away from where they don't want it, which is that engine inlet. So uh, that S-duct and the S-ducts of many teams probably this year are going to be quite important actually in terms of you know treating the air before it meets that halo because usually it was just about treating the air as it hit the driver's helmet now it's hitting the driver's helmet and the halo um, and the little bits and bobs they've got flying off the chassis as well on the either side. Speaking about bits and bobs flying off the side of the chassis, let's move on to the barge board and side pod area. So Williams now with the barge board, they've got that standard dagger kind of treatment that Mercedes and Force India had. Multiple little cuts in the barge board to cut, to kind of improve drag, essentially cutting drag there. They've, all, they've gone for almost a full copy of Ferrari from last year in terms of the way they've done their side pod um, yeah, appenditure I guess you could say. I don't really know what to call it. Sidewall, if you will, to the side pod. They've got that exact same thing. You know, Haas had the four streaks from yesterday's video. Williams have pretty much gone for a literal copy almost of what Ferrari literally had last year in terms of that main plank they've got on the side of the side pod there. And they've gone for the split inlet that Ferrari did. So they've gone for that uh, kind of double intake almost. You've got two winglets going across the inlet of the side pod, helping to split the air going to the top compartment and the bottom compartment. And, and so it looks like pretty much, I don't know, we're two for two basically. So I don't know, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see if we can have a bit of bingo in terms of how many teams are going to go for that split inlet because clearly it worked well for Ferrari and clearly they wouldn't be copying it if it wasn't desirable in terms of splitting the air for different compartments of the engine cooling system. You know, you've got the radiator or the electronics or, you know, whatever in case. I'm not really an engine man, so I can't speak too much of it about it, but there clearly is an advantage of splitting that air. And so the way they're doing that is not only actually having the inlet split but also having those winglets that are probably angled just the right way to send air into that top one and the bottom one and then also obviously just manipulate and hopefully create a vortex so they can try and smoothen out the boundary layer as it goes across the actual side pod down towards the diffuser area. The smoother you can get that the better for the diffuser as I mentioned in yesterday's video. They want It's, it's all about efficiency for the diffuser for a lot of these aero bits as, uh, as the airflow moves downstream of the car. But uh, yeah clearly so a bit of Mercedes kind of uh, mimicry already at the front then you get to the middle, it's kind of Ferrari, so, you know, almost like mix, mix and match, but obviously you can see they've had to change the way they've gone about everything. This just wasn't possible last year, you know. Paddy was there for the entirety of the year, of the year but they couldn't put just strap on these bits onto the car because it wasn't going to work with how the car was set up, how the base of the car was set up last year. Also, along with the Ferrari-style side pods, they've gone with the Mercedes-style uh, little winglets coming off the edge of the chassis, that kind of one little tiny line I've got just under the SMP Racing uh, logo there. So that's again with the Mercedes. So they kind of got them with the, the winglets and the snow plows, if you will, and Mercedes. And then they've got with the walls and the bargeboard areas all kind of Ferrari style. Onto the floor, kind of standard stuff now for most F1 teams, kinking the floor a little bit. And then you've got the squirt gaps. They've got quite a lot of squirt, uh, squirt, gap, squirt slot gaps there at the bottom right before the rear tire. And they've got a bit of a bigger kind of uh, indented bump there as well to try and induce some air to squirt it through that gap. I'm going to try and create a vacuum seal between between the side wall, inside side wall of the rear tire and the front wing. If they can create a vacuum seal, the diffuser works a lot better to suck down it and suck down that entire rear end. Uh, what we mentioned yesterday's video about the T-wings, and now Williams were the only team really that, to my knowledge, if I remember uh, properly, that had a bottom T-wing. Um, they had a double-decker one, essentially. And so it was a case of when the regulations came in to get rid of the T-wings, there's still a loophole there of you can have the bottom T-wing. So the, the one team that had that definitely would have had it 
again. So they've got that, you can see clearly at the, uh, the rear end. They've also got a little split, so they've got, actually got two elements right in the middle. So you can see where the rear wing actually gets connected to the rest of the car. Again, like Haas, they've opted for the double arm approach. But just by the double arm, if I can try and zoom in and show you the blown out picture, it might be quite pixelated, so uh, apologies for that. But there is a double element wing to the T-wing just in the middle part of it as it crosses over the two arms that connect the entire rear wing to the car. And then they've gone for an M-plate style fixture to the very edges of the T-wing there, and that's going to help uh, concentrate vortices as it goes through there because the M-plate essentially concentrates uh, vortices to the tip of the M-plate at the back there, and it's going to focus it a lot better, and that's going to aid and just make the entire upwash they're trying to go with to help the rear wing work because that upwash is going to hit the bottom end of the rear wing, the entire main plane in the rear wing, and that's an upwash that's going to help change the pressure, change the flow differences between the top and the bottom and help that entire ring, rear wing section work a lot better. Um, and that's pretty much the major talking point. There's also, I can't speak too much of it because I'm not a suspension guy or anything like that, but the suspension to me does look a little bit interesting on the rear end. There's maybe talking to it, it's a little bit different in terms of the way they've treated it. The way that one rod connects to the side pod right at the front is a little bit odd to me. It looks a little bit uh, intriguing and interesting. So I, I can't speak for it because I don't know too much about suspension systems, but it looks a little bit different to what they've got from last year. And definitely they've tried to do something a little bit more aggressive at the rear end because the Williams car has always been quite bloated, I feel. In general, the side pod area has got a little bit slimmer, especially towards the rear end, definitely around the exhaust. It's got really quite tightly packaged, maybe, you know, because now they've got this double split inlet from the Ferrari style at the front of the side pods. Maybe they're a bit more confident about the cooling, so they're trying to pack it in as much as they can and go for that kind of elusive McLaren coin size zero kind of concept. In terms of the actual natural shape of the Williams car, though, in terms of the side pod, they still don't go for the Coke bottle very often. They don't go for that kind of, you know, wide on the entry and then kind of really swooping quite narrowly to the inside. But obviously, that's their philosophy. They've had that for a while now. They've never really gone for that major Coke bottle shape. But they definitely have got a little bit narrower, it looks like, at that rear end. It, as I said about the suspension, it definitely is uh, a bit of an intriguing way to package it. To, to me, it, it definitely looks a little bit different. So those are all the major parts of the Williams car. If we look on the different angle now, this is the one from F1 Racing Magazine. You can see also the winglet they've got on the brake duct, nothing new really in terms of a lot of teams now are doing these little winglets by the brake ducts to again manipulate the flow as it enters the suspension arm and obviously the, the, the suspension arms themselves are going to manipulate the flow as they go towards the barge board and side pod area. But from this angle now you can get a lot better sense of that snow plow I talked about, the Mercedes snow plow at the front and also the Mercedes winglet that comes off but just underneath the S&P racing and then you've got the daggers on the barge board the Ferrari style system and th th definitely from this angle now you can clearly see the double inlet system they've got in terms of the, the winglet is splitting where the air is going. And you, you know for sure probably inside the actual side pod actual uh, section tunnel, they've definitely probably got different chambers in terms of they're wanting to split the air to different parts to cool different parts of the internal combustion engine. And from this angle, you can see actually the T-wing uh, a lot better actually. If, you, if we zoom in there, you can see hopefully that double element part of the T-wing just as it's in between the two different arms there. But yeah, that's probably going to be it from the video. No other major talking points, at least to my eyes at the moment from these two photos. Obviously, there might be stuff I missed. I don't, you know, count myself as any sort of expert, but, you know, I'm, I'm just very intrigued by all of this being an aerospace engineering graduate and obviously clearly from yesterday's video you guys are intrigued and from the previous years you guys have been interested in uh you know seeing a few finer details that maybe you won't see yourselves or you know maybe having it explained of why they do certain things or just what it's a copy from in terms of i like to remember different parts from last year's cars um so yeah if you haven't found it informative then hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below do get subscribed because i will be trying to do every single car uh, in terms of video like this so do get subscribed for that we also have a f1 podcast we do every single week once the season gets going so if you've been looking for an f1 podcast then i do suggest you also get subscribed for that also usually i do f1 gaming stuff so that might intrigue you but uh yeah just if you're new around here do get subscribed but uh yeah hope you enjoy the rest of your day guys and i will see you guys the next one goodbye